Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Move Podcast. I'm joined by Mr. George Hinkapi, Johan Bernil, J.B. Hager. Today's episode brought to you by Zwift. Now, we, we talk about it all the time. And all you all that are joining us on We Do Wednesdays and Suffer Sundays, thank you so much. Getting so much feedback there. So many people showing up. Look, I was on the record. I'm like, I, I ride my bike outdoors. Boy, was I wrong. I was like, I'm an outdoor kitty. I got claws, but I live in a mountain climate and I cannot ride my bike outdoors. I have a solution. Zwift has totally revolutionized this thing. Um, and so to the thousands that show up on Wednesdays and, and suffer Sundays, uh, been a pleasure uh, jumping over, chatting with everybody. And, um, and you know, even got George over there. Yeah, riding we've with been us. Having good, we've been having good times riding on. This is the most I've ridden with the old man. And I don't know how long we ride together every Wednesday now. And, you know, it's really changed our, our communication. Like we talk all the time. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Not really. It doesn't actually happen, but we do get to spend a little time together on Wednesdays and uh, yeah, it's been, it's an amazing platform. Uh, they're changing the game, so to speak. The, the E world championships are just going on right now as well, or just happened. Um, so really just revolutionizing our sport and it's really fun to watch. And George is kicking my ass every Wednesday. Hey, it's pretty simple. Head on over. Like if you just download the companion app, go to events every Wednesday. I know my event here is what 10 mountain time. So 12 Eastern nine Pacific, just scroll down, find the We Do Wednesday, click attend, and then jump in, ride with us. Um, today we're talking about, uh, the future. And, and fortunately, we are uh, uh, joined, obviously, by the man who knows the future of cycling better than almost anybody, if not anybody that I've ever known, uh, Johan Bernil. Um, it, it, you know, and it's a little hard. We were talk, joking a little bit before we started the show. I mean, we're, we're talking about guys in their early 20s, but we also have to recognize that the best riders in the sport are in their early 20s. So we're having to go down a little bit in age and, and try to identify the guys that, that potentially are coming right behind Pogachar, Bernal, Vanapol, all these young guys that we, we talk about all the time that are really, um, we think revolutionizing cycling. Um, so we, we're Johan, the, uh, our Svengali has, has identified some folks. We'll break it down. We've got sort of the top six and then we've got some honorable mentions We'll also have fun with the list that Johan created in 2016 when a, when a team reached out to him and asking him who he thinks is the future of the sport. This, I think, will highlight just what the man uh, can see just by watching the races uh, on TV. Uh, today's show also brought to you by Kuat. Uh, this one, George, thank you so much for hooking me up with these guys. These are some good old boys from, from Southwest Missouri. Uh, I always, whenever I would go down Valley and ride, I'd see these people, these fancy racks. I just throw my bike in the back of my suburban. I'm like, I don't need that. Finally, I was like, no, I am getting with the program. Kuat sent me this, uh, this amazing trailer hitch rack. Just stick. I don't have to take the wheels off. I don't do anything. It's all right there. It takes about two seconds to put it on two seconds to take it off. Car doesn't get all messed up. You know, who also used to give me grief about this was our good buddy, Dylan Casey. He used to, he always, he's always had a coup at, and he was like, dude, what are you doing? I'm like, just throw it in the back, but no, not anymore. George, thanks to you for hooking me up with, uh, with these cool dudes. I got a new rack out the piston pro X. Now this rack is a thing of beauty. It has integrated, check this out, integrated led tail lights for enhanced visibility and safety. Genuine Kashima, Kashima coated hydro pneumatic arms that keep your bike secure and your paint pristine. Head on over to Kuat, that's K U A T dot com, Kuat dot com, and use the promo code The Move at checkout. And Check I this out. have to, I have for to 30% off any swag item. They, by the way, there's some sick swag. Those guys sent me some cool swag. I actually have to thank you, Lance, indirectly for the Kuat contact because I met them at an event that you had me go to in Arkansas when we did the, um, the gravel race there with, with our buddies and you know, how I'm a lot more social when we're at the events than you are. No, no. I mean, right. a lot more people. So I met them and, uh, and now we've got a great, great relationship with them and huge fan of their products. Use it pretty much every weekend and I uh, wouldn't, can't imagine my truck without it. Kuat.com by code discount code 
offer code the move. Um, you're right though. So I, I heard a funny quote the other day about being around people. And I was like, I was like, that's, that's amazing. Cause you're right. I, I don't love being around people. Now I don't hate, I don't dislike people. I just don't. So the quote was something to the effect of, you know, uh, it's not that I hate people. It's just that I prefer when they're not around. Is it? <laughs> is, is that that sounds so dark and here we are talking about the future no, so no. let's have let's have a little fun with this uh this is going to be a fun show uh first time we've done this uh let me just go down a list that johan sent us um and and johan you sent this uh, may 23rd of 2016 at 4 32 in the evening uh somebody had reached out to you who was trying to put together a new team yeah. And they said, who, who are you? You know, we want to put together this team. We want to get some, you know, some established guys, but we also want to get some young guys. Um, and keep in future. mind, keep in mind, this was the year before we started the move. Yeah. We weren't doing it, but he was covered. He had his eye on the ball. Yep. And, and so I'll just read the list. So Nielsen Paulus, bam, that's worked. Uh, Louis Vervec. Vervaka, yeah. He's now on Vervaka. Yeah, Yeah. he's Uh, uh, a a Belgian climber, but he just recently signed for Quick Step and is doing a great job as a a helper in the mountains. Yep, Hugh Carty. Mm -hmm. Huh. Okay, how about this name for you? A certain Julian Alaphilippe. How'd that work out for the future? I think so. Mm -hmm. Ruben Guerrero, Laurent de Plus, Diego Rosa, Nicola Bonafaccio. Huh. Edward Toons. Yeah, that worked out. All right. Stephen Kong. Yeah. Joe Dombrowski. Rohan Dennis. Thais Benut. Jacob Maresco. Maresco. Sprinter. Yep. Tim Wellens. And Miguel Lopez. Mm. Yeah, that would have. I mean, you if you just had that team today, you'd be. <laughs> yeah, I missed a, I, I missed a few. I missed a few. Uh, but, you know, like. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Pogacar wasn't, I think, I don't think he was even racing yet or, <laughs> you know, he was, he was probably just starting racing and, uh, but yeah, when I saw this list, you know, this was, this was uh, a friend, an old friend of mine who wanted to set up a team finally didn't work out, but, uh, you know, he asked me for my advice. And so I just went through the results and, uh, and what I knew about the guys. And it's funny. I, I had this list in my notes on my phone. So, uh, it comes in handy today. And is it, is it looking at results or are you, mm. uh, obviously you, that's, you know, looking at results, seeing a kid, you know, pl- top 10, top five, whatever, or is it also watching them primarily on TV just because it's so much easier and just seeing their riding style, the way they pos- position themselves in the Peloton, uh, uh, you know, the way they can avoid crash, all the things that we know that go into making a successful bike racer. Is, yeah. is it, h- how do you balance those two? It's mainly watching them, mainly watching the races. The guys we're going to talk about later also, for example, it's, it's about seeing them and what they've done till now. Um, and of course, you know, these guys, when they're on this list, they've already done something the, the year before, but you have to, I mean, some of these guys were like Nielsen Paulus was still uh, under 23. He wasn't a professional yet. Um, some other guys like this Moresco, I mean, some of them were Ruben Guerrero was still on the development program. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, um, it's, it's mainly about watching them and, and, and watching what they do at races, little details, because those things are all not always translated in results. Um, but sometimes you, you can, you can see the quality. Do you also look at, uh, how they handle themselves off the bike? You know, uh, that's, that's, or do you not even have, that's difficult. Yeah. That's difficult because, you know, then you, you, you have to start to follow their social media. And that's also, I mean, somebody projects whatever he wants on social media, right? That's not their true, real life. True. Well, I, you, but I, but it's not a bad, I mean, I'm sure these teams are going down the rabbit hole of, of young riders, social media. In fact, um, we will talk about one of the riders on our list who, who got, mm-hmm. you know, was caught up in the crosshairs of that. Um, but I'm sure they are going just like you would hire anybody for a corporation or, or, or even, um, kids applying to college. I mean, the admissions office is definitely going down that list. Oh yeah. Sure. There's, of, of, there's, of, there's, of no, there's no doubt, Lance. I mean, now they're doing the biological testing. 
health testing and they're doing mental health testing too. When they're, when they're going to invest, you know, three to five years of a lot of money in some of these young riders, they really want to know, you know, exactly where they are in terms of their health and their, their mind and how they're going to fit in on their squad. It's, it's definitely, as we know, it's not all about the power and the numbers. It's how, how well they're going to integrate with the team. Yeah. Yeah. I'm That's, curious. How often do you see Johan that, uh, their success as a junior translates to being a pro? Mm, not many, not always. Not, not, no, not many, not many. I just actually went through the list of the world championships juniors in, uh, in Austria when Evenepoel won. And, uh, there's only one of the guys who's on there who also uh, made it or is making it at the moment. We're going to talk about him. Um, but I think what's really important right now is that, you know, the, the majority of these big teams, they have these development teams, right? And that's where they really get to know them and how they know their personality and how they fit in as a team player, uh, how they can, you know, handle themselves off the bike. Uh, it's, I think right now it's, it's, a, it's, it's a necessity really to have a development team. Or other teams just have, you know, full-time scouts uh, who just, you know, go around. Oh, all these teams have that now also. Um, and then basically they try to sign the, the juniors or even earlier than that uh, for the development teams. As we get into this current list, um, how far back did you go? Or what are you, what are you looking at? Um, I mean, basically when I, when I pulled that list together, I, I, I just, you know, I didn't really research. I, I, they just the names came up uh, and especially the guys that have come to my attention this year in the races. Uh, and it's very easy. There's, there's like a, okay, this guy, wow, he's young. He's amazing. You know, he, some guys, you know, they don't have any results yet, but I've seen it and do things that, that say, okay, you know, if you're still there at the end on a climb and yeah, it's only the month of February, but you know, you have to, you have to have the qualities to, to do what they do. Um, so the list, uh, you know, I, I just, uh, I just started the names that came up in my mind and then I did a little bit of looking around in the results and some of the, some of the guys are not even in results yet, but just stuff that I, I know and hear, you know, I, I do stay in connection with a lot of people in the, in the cycling world, you know, talk to a lot of, of my ex colleague directors and, uh, obviously they, they also give me some good information. Well, let's jump in. We're like mm -hmm. I said, we're going to do six, and then we got some honorable mentions. Uh, right out of the gate, I was just looking at his stats here on Pro Cycling Stats. I was struck. The kid was born on Christmas. All right, <laughs> so this is this is his gift to us. He's number one on our. I don't think this is any order actually, but um, young Australian kid, Luke Plapp on mm -hmm. Ineos. Um, sounds like he's a hell of a TT uh, rider. Um, what do you get? Second at the worlds. U23 uh, individual time trial. Um, Johan, what, 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 what do you see? Yeah, I think, I mean, he, uh, he was second at the, I think it was second at the world's uh, junior world time yep. trial uh, yep. uh, when Evenepoel won. So, you know, a lot of these guys are going to have been rivals of Evenepoel. Uh, Evenepoel obviously is a guy that, you know, we've talked about a lot, but uh, there's some, there's some other guys. This guy is one of the guys that I've seen, for example, in the tour of UAE. First of all, he won the Australian championship road race uh, beginning of the year. That's a very hard race to win. There's, you know, some really, really good, uh, yeah. good Great Australians. Riders. And, yeah. and, you know, that Jersey is something that all of them want. Um, he won it basically on his own. I think there was one other teammate of him there. So uh, that's also something, you know, against, uh, the Australian team bike exchange, um, to do that. So you have to be strong, uh, but especially, uh, what I've seen, uh, in tour of UAE, the two times that, uh, it was uphill where Pogacar and, um, and Adam Yates were fighting for it. He was there, uh, doing a lot of work. A lot, a lot, a lot of work for Adam Yates because two times Adam Yates was uh, really with the intention of uh, of attacking Pogacar. Uh, he he set an incredible pace, and uh, and then after that he didn't break down. He was still able to maintain, and I think he came in fifth or sixth. And he's not up there in the in the GC because uh, the time trial just before the time trial, the poor guy had a crash and broke his time trial bike and did the time trial on his normal bike. Uh, so he was out of GC, but, um, yeah, the guy, the, this guy has some power. Yeah. No, some big power. no, no, no fear as well. I mean, on that stage that you, one of those stages you mentioned, Johan, 500 meters to go. I mean, he's, he's going for it. doesn't really care who he's with the best climbers in the world. 
and you mm-hmm. know, he ended up getting fifth, but it was an incredibly aggressive move with, without fear after riding on the front so much for, for the eights. Um, just incredible, really impressive to watch. Also, you know, uh, uh, Olympic Olympic uh, medalist. I think uh, he got bronze in, in in the team pursuit. I mean, you know, these guys uh, on the Australian uh, pursuit team, those guys are warriors. You know, they can ride super fast, and it, you know, it's it's an interesting combination. You know, a guy who comes from the track and has this speed, obviously, he's going to be a great uh, individual pursuiter too. And then also has have these climbing abilities. That's that makes already for you know two really really big qualities you need to be a, a great champion in the big tours. Awesome. And, and Luke Plapp, you know, it's, it's the name. I mean, it's a, it's a name that has something that has a ring to it. You know, Luke Plapp. <laughs> we, we didn't, you do, we asked you how, how you go about picking these riders. I didn't realize that it came down to, the, to one of the metrics was the name, uh, you know, <laughs> well, yeah, it's arms, arms strong. <laughs> it's just got a certain, <laughs> You know, on that note, on that note, the next in in America, you don't meet many guys named Magnus. No, like that's such a Euro name, right? And, and number that's next so, on our list, and number two on our list, and again, not in any particular order. Mm-hmm. Magnus Sheffield, by the way, also mm-hmm. on Team Ineos. So for those that, and we get a lot of people asking us and talking about the future of Ineos because you know the last ten years for them has been so wildly successful. I think we'll start to see that they're not asleep here. They're, they are identifying mm-hmm. great young talent. But this kid, Sheffield, I've been hear, hearing about him for years. Um, already won a race this year in, in just incredible fashion, just straight boss. Mm-hmm. Um, but for you American folks, and we also get a lot of questions from, from the American audience saying, you know, when is when is our time again? When is, when is the time of, uh, you know, that the Americans will not, not necessarily dominate cycling, but, uh, be a force and a factor in, in all the biggest races. And so I think you're starting to see that. Um, but this kid has got some, he's got some power. Yeah, there's no doubt. I'm, I'm very excited about Magnus from, from upstate New York, you know, comes from a, not an ideal place to, to ride a bike. I know being from New York myself, it's very cold winters, but, you can tell he's super tough, got a great head on his shoulders. Got to ride with him down in Miami uh, back in November and really nice kid. He's had some struggles with his teams. I know we, we, he kind of came on the scene at the world championships there when Quinn won and he did an incredible job for the team. We all watched it. It was very impressive on the front the whole day, probably the strongest guy in the race or one of them for sure. Um, and then last year, I think he only did like three or four races. I think he did the national championships and the world championships. So he essentially trained the whole year long without racing. Um, so for me to yeah, watch him did- come out early in the year and win a stage in the Rue de Del Sol, sure, nobody at, back in the day, nobody cared about Rue de Del Sol. Probably wasn't that hard. Now every race is really hard. And the cool. way he won it was just really yeah. spectacular. So and and, and I- by, the, by the way, he's only 19 years old, right? 19 he, years old. He's, he's got a couple or a couple months shy of his 20th birthday now that yeah you know i know we're seeing younger and younger guys and and i felt like i turned pro at a young age and and was sort of certainly the youngest guy on the team and the one of the youngest in the peloton you know i was boy 21 ish and so 19 is man that that is it's it's hard to put into words just how impressive that is uh, meanwhile, you know, you got a guy like Alejandro Valverde, who's, who seems like he's our age, George still winning races, but to be 19, man, and, and, and all that goes with it, you know, being a, a, a professional European athlete, basically living over there. And that's, it's hard. And it's, yeah. it's but it's that's also hard. one of the things, one of the things you see also with these guys is, you know, this, they're all, all so well-spoken, you know, I mean, they give these interviews and they're like, I mean, this, this is not a 19 year old guy. I mean, he knows, he knows what he's doing and he knows what he's saying. I mean, Magnus, you you said there's not many, there's not many uh, Americans whose first name is Magnus. So he actually has a double nationality. Yeah. So he's American and Norwegian, uh, former ski racer, uh, and then, uh, passed on to mountain bike and cyclocross. So, I mean, this guy's 19 and uh, think about this. He's 19. And we already say he's a former ski racer. And a former mountain biker, and he's only 19. I mean, what? Mm. Does, I mean, w- maybe he's going to go on to another sport and also be good. And also, very, very important. This guy has the world record over the 3,000 meters pursuit juniors. 
Wow. 306, three minutes, six seconds, standing hmm. start. So that means, you know, he does the first kilometer in 104, 105 probably, and then two kilometers straight at, at 60 kilometers per hour as a junior. Yeah. And for you uh, folks who think in miles an hour, that's uh, more than 35 miles an hour for a junior. <laughs> yeah. So that's what he did. Basically, George, when you saw, if you saw the, the finish of the, of the stage win in Ruta yep. del Sol, he did a, you know, he did an individual pursuit. He was, you know, they were meant to, uh, I think lead out for, um, I don't know for who it was for, uh, for one of their fast guys. And he just happened to be there and just kept going and nobody could catch him. I mean, yeah, was, by, that was really, by impressive. the way, that was a, that was a, looked like a very, very aggressive, hard stage. I mean, up yeah. and down all day, breakaways going all day. It was, it was nonstop action. And I think at the yeah. end, the riders were just kind of toast and he rode away from them. It's just cool to have a world record. Like, I mm -hmm. don't, I don't yeah. know. World record. Yeah, it is. It is <laughs> definitely. Oh, well, maybe I do. Depends who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number three, shocker. Also been poached and uh, snatched by Team Ineos. Uh, Spanish rider Carlos Rodriguez, 21 years old, from Almunecar in Spain. Almunecar from Andalusia. Almunecar. Yeah. Yeah. Obstacles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i mean funny enough funny enough the three first guys we talk about uh, are on team ineo so obviously you know if you get on those guys radar you know we all know you know they have their whole infrastructure in place they know what to look for and uh, you know you know this guy signed straight away from is this is already uh i think so he was he was in the world championships when 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 Quinn Simmons won, he was on the, there in the under 23, and then he passed straight to the to the professionals. Um, was second in the Tour de l'Avenir last year overall, and did what I saw from him there in the last stage. With um, you know, with uh, they did the Col de Iseran, which is was the highest the highest mountain of the whole. Uh, I mean, that's actually where Bernal won the Tour de France. Also, I think it's 2,800 meters. Um, he went away there and, and, you, you know, I mean, you know, in, in the under 23, how difficult it is to stay away. And he did like 80 kilometers on his own and just came short a few seconds to win the overall, but that ride he did there was really impressive. Um, you know, so, uh, so yeah, he's, I think he's a super climbing talent can also time trial quite well. And, and, you know, what I've seen from him last year and this year, um, working for the team leader. And sometimes being the last rider to be with the team leader in a mountain stage. Um, I mean, as a young guy, that's something, you know, uh, he, um, I don't remember who won. Um, it was the stage on the Mont Ventoux, no, a race on the Mont Ventoux. There's this one day, one day race on the Ventoux before the tour. And uh, he was, he was riding for the, the team it was for Sosa, uh, Ivan Sosa, who then won the, won the race. But the work he did there during three, four kilometers when there was 20, 15, 20 riders left, you know, as a young kid of 19, then that was impressive. So uh, we're definitely going to hear from this guy, Carlos mm. Rodriguez. Yeah. Okay. Um, we got three more to go. Let's jump in a little bit of business. Today's show also brought to you by Helix. Helix Sleep. We talk about it all the time. My favorite mattress. George has got the mattress. Johan, I think your mattress is on the way. Oh, uh, right. Really? Well, nice. yeah, we got to make sure you're sleeping. Um, it, it, they, they've, they've made this thing so easy for us. You, you, you go on the website, helixsleep.com, and you fill out a two-minute sleep quiz. Talk about your characteristics, the traits, and, and all the, the nuances of your sleep. They totally customize the mattress for you. Um, don't believe me. Uh, not just uh, are we big fans, Wired Magazine and GQ Magazine. Uh, named it Mattress of the Year, as well as a lot of the top chiropractors and sleep, um, sort of sleep experts, sleep expert doctors out there helping people hack their sleep. They love the Helix mattress. For a limited time, they're offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Head on over to helixsleep.com slash the move. That's helixsleep.com slash the move. Take the two-minute quiz. Get your customized mattress. And close your eyes. George, how are you feeling today? 
Let me, let me, let me turn around. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Here we go. There I ask, uh, why are you asking? <laughs> Our friends at Manscaped are back. How, how, how is the, how is the, 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 the situation down there? Have, have you been, uh, <laughs> all, all is good. All is good. I yeah, can't complain. <laughs> Should we, is Mel at the house? Should we get her to come in and talk about how you've been manscaping? Nope. She's not. She's not. Okay. Well, the next time we talk about manscaped, I would like to talk to Mel and have her, (laughs) I would like, I would, and we can bring Anna on. I would love a review of, of how everybody here is doing with their. (laughs) (laughs) That'd be a whole separate show. They are. (laughs) Yeah. We're going to have a whole separate show on how to shave your. Uh, they are the global leaders. George, George, George what, what, why are you so why are you so secretive about it? I, mean, yeah, I don't know why you're because look at I'm look at the man. Not. Look when you're that hairy. Look, I mean, I'm actually that, not. No, but I look at him. Oh no, look when you're that hairy. It's a very sensitive subject. You cannot, you can't talk about it. Like it's just come. <laughs> we can talk about a lot of things that Manscape does, but you know, it's also a great way to trim your beard in the shower. Yeah, the mirror. It's yeah, waterproof. totally. I mean, it's yeah. super convenient for all everything hair related. They're crushing it. They're the global I mean, I, leaders. I, I, it, well, I, I got, I got the goodies. I got the goodies, uh, George. I, I used it. Somebody know that. It, it, do you cha- do you shave your balls or you don't shave your balls? <laughs> you can shave your balls, George. Really? Yes, yes, you can. Yeah. Do all I don't that. think you're supposed Vegas to say says that. You can do it. <laughs> I like you're supposed to. I, I tried not to say the b word. It just, just uh, but it says it on the package. It says it on the package. So can I? F- all right, <laughs> then. <laughs> They're the global leaders in men's below the waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineering tools for your family jewels and is now available in the USA, Canada, UK, Australia, New Zealand, and Europe. They have an exclusive offer for our audience. Uh, head on over to manscaped.com. By the way, uh, in my notes here, it's <laughs> they wrote this. Your balls will thank you. So I guess we can say balls. Oh, Jesus. Anyways, manscaped.com, 20% off for our listeners. The discount code is, why is it my name when we're talking about balls? It should, anyways, uh, uh, the man, <laughs> Lance, uh, hey, the other thing, in all seriousness, they're totally committed to the fight against testicular cancer. Um, one young man, most of, the, most of the time, typical age 15 to 35, is diagnosed every hour in the United States with testicular cancer. This is their go-to charity. Head on over to manscaped.com. 20% off by code is Lance. George, you are such a fucking wimp. I mean, this these guys are like so excited. I didn't say anything. I'm it's excited t- too. By the way, you didn't it's mention taken how us a cool, year. It's taken us a cool. year to, to get you to even talk. About, we had to get him last summer during the tour. This The guy, I had to get him a shrink. He was so <laughs> traumatized when I told him he, we were going to do this. So I saw the shrink and I'm all good talking about it now. And the, the branding and the packaging is very cool. It's cooler than any razor you will ever buy in your entire life. So yeah. for all of our listeners, you need to check it out. I just love it. I just love it. All right. Next on our list. Juan, Juan you might need to help me. Juan Ayuso. Yeah. Juan Ayuso. Juan Ayuso. Juan, Juan Ayuso. Yeah. This is, I think he's the, the youngest guy on our list. Only 19 years old. Yeah. Uh, by the way, his birthday. He doesn't, by the way, he doesn't turn. He doesn't turn twenty until uh, September. So he is the the, the you, mm. know, you know boy, quite a few months younger yeah. than, than Magnus. But uh, same you know, ditto what we said about just the challenges of, of being a a nineteen year old kid in a professional peloton. But what do we know? But yeah, well, we know we know a lot. You know, we know that in my opinion, he was the best. Uh, rider in the under 23 category, uh, definitely last year. He he won the baby Giro um, in a very dominant fashion. And there was no competition for him. And there were some really good riders there. Um, and, you know, we get, he went to the professionals straight away, uh, riding in the front. And actually, uh, not longer ago than yesterday, he was, uh, I watched the race uh, in France, um, which is a, the race where Primoz Roglic did his debut and where Alaphilippe was and was won by Jonas Vingegaard. And mm. he was by far the best rider of the race, by far. He was with Vingegaard until 200 meters to go, um, then cracked because he did way too much work, but he was the, ba- the best guy. 
Um, and uh, and yeah, from what I hear, you know, the the numbers uh, and all the test results they have, they say, you know, they're not surprised. This is what he should be doing, uh, what he should be producing as results. Uh, so, I mean, at that age, be so good. And, and straight away, you know, in a big team, UAE, uh, he was on the radar of all the big teams. He could go anywhere, this guy. Um, but yeah, I mean, what he showed me yesterday in, in the race in France was, was impressive, really impressive. And it was a difficult and hard race. Yeah, that was a, I was watching that as well, Johan, that was a super hard race, a lot of small roads. So it indicates he's, he's a good bike handler as well. He can position himself well mm-hmm. in the Peloton. And like you said, he probably was a bit too excited, did a bit too much work there, um, with Jonas, but in, in, in incredible ride. I do have a question for you, Johan, as you saw the first three guys went to Neo. So clearly the powerhouse teams are getting, you know, the first look at these young talents. Are they signing them for long-term contracts, five-year contracts or. So it's know? all on George. It's all on. Yeah. And that's a good question, but I see this pro cycling stats.com is pretty, pretty rad. Um, if it's accurate, it shows you how long that they are committed to that team for most, all of these Ineos guys are there. Looks like they're locked up for three or four years. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, Ayuso also, I think he's on a five-year deal with uh, with UAE. And also, I think the big teams also has have the opportunity to give them straight away a really good contract, obviously incremental, uh, and other teams are not able to do that. First of all, because most of the teams don't have a sponsorship deal that's so long. Uh, you know, and if you can give a young guy a good contract the first year and then guaranteed increasing contracts, that's obviously super, super attractive. And you know well, what? I mean... Ineos and, and Jumbo Visma and, and and UAE are the sexy teams. That's where every young rider dreams about uh, going, right? So, uh, all right, moving on down the list, we have, I'm also going to need help with the pronunciation here, a rider from Eritrea, which we've seen up at the front mm-hmm. in, in a lot of races. I certainly would not have seen a rider coming out of Eritrea that that makes it on the show that, that that's at the at the, at the pointy end of bike races and has this kind of talent. Like this to me is really cool. Like you th- you, when you think about, I mean, we cycling is a lot of things, but it's primarily an endurance sport, but it's also a sport where you have to, you know, sort of um, jockey for position and, and maintain position and avoid crashes. But if we look at one of the ultimate endurance tests, the marathon, right? We, we know where the dominant athletes come from uh, for that event. Um, it's, I don't think it's that far-fetched to think that, that, um, that the Kenyans and the Ugandans and the Eritreans can come so long as they can stay at the front of the race and avoid the crashes. We know what, what, you know, how they're built as endurance athletes, right? So this one's cool for me. Help me with the pronunciation. Binyam. Binyam Girmai. Binyam Girmai. Binyam Girmai, yeah. So, so this is a rider. He he actually, you know, Eritrea is the the African country where cycling is the most popular. It's super popular there. Not know for which reason, but they have lots of bike races. They probably have a better road infrastructure, um, and and probably a federation which you know has is better organized than the others. But this rider comes through the uh, UCI program. They had it. The UCI had this team which put together young cyclists from non-cycling traditional countries. Uh, so he came through that, uh, through that program. And, uh, you know, before he, t- he was under under 23, this, this rider is the only rider in the juniors category who was able to one day beat Remco Evenepoel. Mm. I think that's quite an interesting fact. Um, you know, so they came two riders together. So first he was, able to follow him that that was already a miracle because Remco was just on another in another league and always riding away by himself and then beat him in the sprint so that was basically the introduction of Bing, Binyam Girmai uh, for the people who were following the the, the youth categories but uh, but yeah the, and then last year we saw him um, he was already on a professional team he was on the Delco Delco uh, Delco Nipo team uh and uh for his national team he was second in the world championships in belgium uh if you remember the sprint uh there was one guy that escaped at the end uh italian guy we forgot to mention him here but he's also a really good rider but filippo baronchini 
Uh, but this guy came from like 10th position and won the bunch sprint, which, you know, already, I mean, for a guy who looks like a climber and in theory is a good climber, having this speed in the sprint is quite unique. And, uh, and then on top of that, this year, uh, so this team folded and, uh, and now he's on uh, Intermarché, World Tour team, World Tour level, and he already won a stage in uh, the Challenge of Mallorca, beating, you know, the likes of uh, Alejandro Valverde and uh, I don't know if Ewan was there, but there was some, there was some other sprinters there that, uh, that were really, I mean, good sprinters and he, he won, I mean, like, you know, fair and square. Mm. And what about, it, 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 how is that? I see here on the, on, on the web that, so he's committed to Intermarche Wanti through two, 2024. So mm. He's got, he basically has three full seasons. You know, right. Well, never mind. I think, I, I think, I think, you know, I mean, teams like Intermarché for those guys, you know, it's, it's not necessarily a bad thing because, hmm. you know, they, first of all, these guys need guys who can win races. They don't have that many. Uh, so he's going to get the full support. And this team, I have to say, Intermarché, they have, you know, made a lot of changes and they have hired some coaches from some other teams. Um, you know they're they're up there. I mean they're they're in the final of every race. Uh, you know yeah, nothing they, they, nothing come nothing comes by coincidence. They are doing a good job. You know they've had a great start to the year. I mean last year they got the Giro stage win, and I think they're kind of rolling on that momentum already. Some really strong showings this year. But you you he also got seventh place this past weekend on the race that Jonas won, which was a very tough, very hilly, very technical race. With all the big guys getting ready for Paris Nice and Torino, I think that was uh, also a very impressive result. Yeah, sixth was Ala Philippe. Yep. <laughs> Last of our of our top six here, another American, uh, Quinn Simmons, who's been around a couple of years. Another guy who's uh, multidisciplinary. I think you know we saw what he did in Leadville here a couple of years ago. Apparently, this I've never met him or even ridden with him, but kid's apparently just a beast. Just twenty years old. Um, but been on the pro scene. Um, like geez, he joined Trek Segafredo in 2020. Um, <laughs> so talk about starting young. Um, but but and 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 you you'll see when you if you look him up, you'll see this is not a um doesn't look like a normal 20 year old. This kid is mature, he's he's fit, he's strong. Um, it looks like a man, right? Yeah. And so, but also, does that does that sound weird? <laughs> Maybe we need to send him a manscaped kit. <laughs> he's trimmed that beard up. And trimmed he's hairy. Beard. He's hairy. So and he's very hairy. <laughs> Maybe we might get him an endorsement deal, but no, he's, he's, what he is, is aggressive. Right. And, and I mean that in, in a good way and some, you know, and, it, and it caught up to him in a not so good way. And when, of course he got embroiled in this whole, you know, Twitter affair with, with the team and, and we don't need to get into that, but it was, it was out there to our earlier point of, how much diligence these teams do on young riders and just their positions on, on things out there uh, in the world. But this, this kid's aggressive. And uh, I think in the pre-show, Johan, you were saying he's already at only 20 has already finished a grand tour. Mm -hmm. And and according to you finished it pretty damn strong. Yeah. Um, That, that would have been unheard of in our generation to, to, to do a, to finish. No, I mean, I suppose you could have started one, but to finish one at 19 years old. Yeah, that was, that was it, no, unthinkable. Unthinkable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Last year he won, he won a stage race. He won the, the tour of tour of Wallonie, which, you know, it's, I think six stages was super strong, was by far the best rider. And, uh, you know, to do that at that age against guys who were really going for it. Um, you know, he was obviously in the juniors category, he was a full grown man already then. So he had that physical advantage. Uh, but you know, he's, uh, he keeps doing it in the, in the professional. So he obviously has a huge engine, um, very aggressive, super aggressive. And, um, you know, last year, for example, I remember Strade Bianchi of last year, mm. he was up there with the best of the best, like, you know, with the Ala Philippe's and Van der Poel and Bernal, and he was up there and he had a puncture and then he, I think he crashed and, but he was, he was impressive in that race already. So that's, you know, a year ago. And he went from being a junior straight to pro, correct? Yes, correct. I think yeah. in, in our the history of our sport, I mean, there's maybe what ten riders that have done that. He just he, he, he just LeBron James that shit. Yeah, if I mean, you, that's if, kind of if, unheard of. 
if you look, I mean, Siemens did that. Uh, Rodrigo's did that. Oh, even a, even a, uh, Carlos Rodriguez did that. No. Um, Remco. I mean, Remco even the pool is he's now 22. The guy has already won eight stage races. Eight stage races at 22. Well, you know, so everything to, is to, to, to reiterate, we are not talking about. I mean, that's the crazy thing here. I mean, we're trying to find young kids. I mean, these kids who, to your point, Johan, who are the best in the sport are also very young, right? These yeah. kids are younger, but you know, the, the, the in one name we forgot to mention at the top of the show is, is Tom Pidcock, also very young. Um, it's yeah. I mean, it'll be interesting to see if, if just the whole arc of a, of a cyclist career, their sort of their rise and their, uh, their, their, uh, peak and plateau and then their, and then their fall, it, it also shifts. Who knows? Right. I personally, um, I personally think, you know, uh, logically you would say lo- long careers, like, you know, mid thirties, I, I think that's probably not going to happen with these guys. Not, not that, from, not from a, not from a physical standpoint, but you know, if you if you know how much stress there is on the on the mind and the body, now everything's measured. They they track everything. There's so much pressure on those guys that it's almost impossible that in their mid thirties they're still around at the highest level. Uh, mentally, mentally already, it's it's going to take a lot to to be a, to be there. Yeah. All right. Let's jump into the, 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 our, our six honorable mentions. And I'd like to throw in one more on just on my own at the end, but, uh, and Johan, if any of these names jump out or something sticks out, stop me and, and, um, uh, and, and chime in. But, uh, another interesting thing I see on here is you just starting to see it, it, you know, back when we came on the scene, I mean, you had the French and the Spanish and the Italian and the Dutch and the Belgians and, yeah. And then every now and again, you have an Australian or an American. And, um, this list is very international. We're talking about a rider from Eritrea. First two names here on, on, our, on our honorable mentions, both from Norway. Uh, mm-hmm. Tobias Halland Johannesson, mm-hmm. born in 1999. Rasmus yeah. Tiller. Win, win, winner of the Tour de l'Avenir last year. Uh, right, which, which for y'all that don't know is, is the Tour of the Future. Yeah. Um, many considered to be the, you know, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of riders that have won the tour de l'Avenir. They've gone on to, to, you know, great success the tour. The tour de France. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Rasmus Tiller. Yeah. A little bit older, but, uh, unknown. So he's on, uh, on this uh, same team as, as, uh, Tobias Johansson, uh, you know, X, which is a Norwegian team. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, the guy's super strong. Uh, he's going to be one of the guys who is going to be top 10, top five sometimes, in all of the spring classics, mm. uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see that name quite a lot. Listen, man, whatever you, you tell us, buddy. <laughs> um, we have a Belgian cyan, mm-hmm. Well, I'm not even going to try this name. You, you yeah. say the name cyan. Oitebroeks. It's Kian. It's Kian. No, it's not, no, it's not, it's not Kian. It's cyan. I think it's, I can, I, well, anyway, I think they name him Sian. Uh, Anyways, Oitebroeks. Oitebroeks. Yeah. So he's he's he was considered um, as a junior, as also a junior, nineteen years old. Yeah, as a junior, um, first year junior to have better values and test results uh, than Remco Evenepoel. Uh, straight from um, the development team, um, straight to Bora Hansgrohe. He's already professional now. Um, you know, I haven't I haven't put him in the top six because I haven't seen any results yet. But you know, from what I hear, his qualities are also incredible. Mm. All right, another Norwegian, Tobias Foss. Yeah, Tobias Foss. Tobias Foss, uh, two years professional already. Uh, also, ex winner of the Tour de l'Avenir, um, but already last year uh, top ten in the Giro. Uh, wow. and, and is somebody who, you know, I've seen him in the tour of Algarve this year, being in the front all the time, uh, can climb and can time trial, uh, is definitely a guy for the, the grand tours. All right. Another Belgian Ian van Wilder. Yeah. Ian van Wilder, uh, same generation as Evenepoel, um, got out of his contract with, uh, DSM like many others and went to quick step. Um, 
also a big talent, can climb in time trial, very complete rider. Great. Uh, last one on the list here, German, mm-hmm. Ben Zwiehoff. Yeah, well, I, I don't have... Slightly um, older, but uh, comes yes. from a, from the pro mountain bike scene. Yeah, first year pro. That's that's why I put him on there. And an interest, interesting uh, name to follow because the, the rumors I've heard is that his values and his performances are incredible. Uh, you know, he's a huge athlete and uh, Bora Hansgrohe has signed him on and uh, they expect a lot of him. Right. And my, my one other honorable mention, just cause he's so special to me. And, and, and I think he's, I think he's got a, uh, I know he has a huge engine. I think he's I got a bright future is Matthew Riccatello. We talk about him mm-hmm. a lot on the show and I obviously grew up racing tries with his dad. And so I've, I've known uh, Matthew since he was shitting yellow, but uh, it's the, uh, and what a head on his shoulders, boy, smart and mature and, and, and has some developing to do, I think, as a, as an athlete, but uh, he'll get there um, and can do it all. Can climb, can time trial, uh, can position, position himself well for, for a, uh, a small rider. Uh, so special shout out to him and George, maybe Enzo, Enzo Hincapi, the way I've seen yeah. this kid develop, we're going to be putting him on. You're going to be, he's going to be on your list in like <laughs> two or three years. <laughs> we, we got some time for that. He's only 13, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> hey, I want to ask you guys each something before we wrap. I think this will be, might be fun. Uh, think back to your first year and on a world tour team. Here's the question. How old were you and who nurtured you as a newbie and who just busted your balls? Like was really hard on you and toughened you up. Mm. Hmm. You want to go first, George? Sure. I'll go first. Um, I was fortunate enough to go on the same team as Lance, uh, 1994 and, uh, I had Steve Bauer, Phil Anderson and Sean Yates kind of, they were like the classics guys. And I got to learn a lot from them. Um, the same time Sean Yates, not only did he like nurture me and mentor me, but he also broke my balls all the time. <laughs> like if I was at the back, I remember one time it was just some race early season race and I was just on the limit dying. All of a sudden I see Sean Yates just sit up and he's like looking back, looking back. And I'm like, oh shit, I hope he ain't looking for me. <laughs> and <laughs> sure enough, he, he goes all the way up and he goes, boy, get your ass to the front right now. And I'm like, okay, okay, I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> so, but it was great. It was an amazing learning experience for me. Yeah. And my, and mine, not to, not to be lame, but I, I obviously joined Motorola, the same team as George. And those were the three, especially Phil. Um, and, and Sean were, um, they were both equal parts, um, tough on, I think both of us, but, but also very encouraging. They were, they were both, um, and Phil was my roommate every night. So you just lay in, lay in bed at night after you shut off the lights, ask questions, pick their brain. Um, you, you can't put a value on that, right? This is, you know, Phil Anderson and Sean, all those names that, that George has mentioned three of the greatest of all time that we were blessed to come into the sport with. Um, so yeah, but, 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 you know, it, and nobody was ever overly, uh, um, uh, tough on us. Right. It was, it was, it was more of a, of a firm support and, and just, and also super transparent just about, um, you know, the, 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 you know, the way to race a bike. Right. And so, um, same Z's. Mm. Johan. Yeah. I was, uh, went to, when I uh, joined the bigger team, I was a bit older. I first, I was on a small Belgian team as a pro. Then I went to Lotto, uh, when I was, I was 24 already. And, uh, the guy who took care of me and busted my balls at the same time was, uh, the the big champion and may he rest in peace Claude Criquillon mm. you know ex world champion Belgian champion I mean incredible rider and uh, I learned so uh, so much from him you know I, I roomed with him and you know he basically told me everything on how to race a, tri- a, tri- a three week tour and uh, yeah really good memories yeah, yeah. too too bad he's not here with with us anymore. Yeah. And JB, what, what about your first team? And, uh, <laughs> well, you, as an amateur, you know who this is. Oh, Corey. Yeah. College, yeah. your buddy. He, yeah. He, college. He Dude. taught me how to race and, and busted my chops a lot. But did, that's he, just... ta- did he tell you, did he tell you, JB, did he tell you be somebody? 
<laughs> yeah, <somebody. I've> <laughs> one, one time, one, one time college told me, he's like, you, you, this is my college voice. <laughs> you, you, you don't have no idea how hard it is racing in Texas. Like you, <laughs> you're in, over in fucking France, George and all those guys just pulling you around. We don't have that. <laughs> I'm like, did you fall and hit your fucking head? <laughs> what, just shut up right now. Stop. No, man. But, seriously, man. Driveway series. <laughs> no support out there by myself, man. I'm like, dude, done. End of conversation. <laughs> that, was, that was JB's mentor, that guy. <laughs> but, he's, yeah. but, 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 but for sure, for sure, he's going to be listening. We, we love you, college. Well, he, as soon as he hears that we talked about him, he, damn, he wouldn't listen otherwise. You know? <laughs> oh, no, really? Oh. No, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Okay, but he'll but listen. Yeah. Somebody will tell him that he got a, a really good story told about him. So he, uh, he may fast forward to the very end where his name <laughs> comes up. But all right. Hey, thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll be back soon with another episode of The Move. It's been fun. And 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 y'all, we'll keep the list, obviously. So we'll be able to, to reference this uh, in future years when we continue to do this show. But otherwise, just keep it. Watch it during the season and uh, and, and, and grade the this Fingali over there. Great, Johan. But, Thank you. Yep. Thanks for tuning in. George has got to leave. He's got to go shave his stuff. Uh, <laughs> I actually got to go pick up my son, but yeah. Uh, I got to go. I got to go to the dentist to get my teeth cleaned. Ugh. Anyways. All right. Thanks for tuning in. See y'all later. Ciao.